Hello again fellow Good Omens fans. I'm Sindaria and in this video I'm going to discuss some possible answers to the question who was Crowley before he fell. This video is full spoilers for Good Omens season 2. If you haven't finished watching the show please go do that first then come back and check out my videos. How do I hear a wahoo? Show and what we can deduce from there. Angelic Hierarchy how does the hierarchy of the angels work in heaven? There are many possible theologies that Gaiman and Pratchett may have drawn from, including multiple denominations of Christianity and Judaism. It appears that the authors drew from multiple sources and that the system is not completely defined. Mostly, it seems to be a combination of the traditions of Catholicism and Judaism. I'm just going to go over this briefly. I'd also like to quickly thank the wonderful folks on the Good Omens Discord server, specifically Nicholas, who did a lot of work putting this information together. While answering fan questions, Neil Gaiman seemed to indicate that the hierarchy is not well defined in universe. When asked about some seemingly contradictory information about Aziraphale, Neil Gaiman responded that Aziraphale's change from cherubim to principality was either a promotion or a demotion, depending on which hierarchy the fan in question subscribes to. With this very soft system in place, we do still have some canon information from the books and the TV show. So here's what we know of the existing angelic hierarchy in the Good Omens universe. Although even here, the rules are... The archangels have their own subcategories with the supreme archangel at the top. This would be Gabriel in season one. Just below him are the archangels Michael and Uriel. Though Michael as duty officer seems to slightly outrank Uriel, at least Michael seems to think so. Just below that, we have the lower ranking archangels including Sindolphin and Seraquiel. Next, we have Cherubim, with a capital C. Below that are Thrones and Dominions, which appear to be middle-ranking angels. The lowest orders are Principalities, Archangels with a small a, and then angels ranked by class, going down to 37th rank, where Muriel is. The Clues. I think it may be a clue. Let there be light. In the present time, he calls lightning and has in the past worked with weather. That's a lot of star and sky related powers there. In season one, episode one, he's also shown signing a book, but Neil Gaiman has come right out and said that was just David wiggling his fingers and that they just later followed it with fire. So theories about what the symbol means are a bit pointless. These sorts of powers do tend to be associated with higher ranking angels in Abrahamic lore. In episode 5, when Shax and her gang of thriller MTV escapees assault the bookshop, Jim tries to get himself up. Shax tells him, And you tell that ass, Aziraphale, and that arch traitor, Curly! The prefix arch, or arc, only seems to be used in heavenly hierarchy, not in hell. Could she be referring to his prior ranking as an archangel? I want to show you the clue! In the final episode of season two, after tricking Muriel into taking him up to heaven, he is able to open the file on Gabriel. Muriel states, I couldn't open it if I wanted to. I don't have clearance. You'd have to be a throne or a dominion or above. And when she asks how he accessed the file, he replies, I haven't always been a demon, and they never changed their passwords. From this, we can say he was, at the least, a middle-ranking angel. After Seraquiel catches them at it, she doesn't stop Crowley, but actually commands Muriel to show him the trial. Then, when they're headed back to the lift, he says, You two, to Seraquiel, and she just goes along with him. Are these behaviors remnants of working with someone of equal or higher rank in the past? Or does Crowley just have a lot of charm and command presence? <laughs> Maybe both. Showing him the trial does seem an odd detail to me. He is a demon now. Is Seraquiel hoping he can help them find Gabriel if he sees the information? Is this because of the bees explanation Crowley gave earlier, that angels aren't defensive once you're inside? It seems she might have just shown him everything in the first place in either of those cases, which to me indicates that his ability to access the files on his own was shown to us, the audience, for a reason. Throughout the series, Crowley has a number of encounters that demonstrate he does not remember people well from before the fall. He does not remember Furfur, who says they fought side by side in the Great War before the fall. 
He does not remember building nebulas with Seraquiel, though Neil Gaiman has confirmed he does remember Aziraphale. Is this just another aspect of their millennia-long bond, or is this a clue to something else? I want to show you the clue! Gabriel is about to get his memory wiped after being demoted, but Crowley wasn't demoted. He was cast down, and none of the other demons seem to have lost their memories. Taken together, the evidence does seem to indicate that Crowley was an Archangel, capital A, but it isn't definitive. Possible Identities There are many named angels in the various Abrahamic traditions, and this video would be hours long if I addressed every single one of them, so I'm only going to discuss those that are most likely and the most popular among the fandom. We are going to cover Lucifer, Baraquiel, Raphael, Azazel, and Kokabiel. Let's start with Lucifer. This idea is very common in the fandom. Lucifer was the supreme archangel of heaven before Gabriel. There are a lot of similarities between Lucifer and Crowley, the snake in Eden being a big one. There's also a line in the second season where Gabriel says something about how it can't happen again or else it's an institutional problem, and the Metatron later fleshes this out saying, For one prince of heaven to be cast into the outer darkness makes a good story. For it to happen twice makes it look like there is some kind of institutional problem. This theory is the most straightforward, but also the easiest to dismiss. Mr. Gaiman has confirmed that Lucifer became Satan and has also stated point blank that Crowley wasn't Lucifer. The Supreme Archangel is the Prince of Heaven, so the two times being referred to by the Metatron are Lucifer, who is not Crowley, and Gabriel. This one we can fully cross off our list of possibilities. Baraquiel is an angel from Judaic and Catholic lore who commands armies. The reason Baraquiel has taken off as a fan theory recently is because of the book that Furfur has in the backstage scene of the magic show titled Angels Who Walk the Earth. There is a brief shot of the book, apparently a guide for demons concerning angels and how to spot them. We see Aziraphale listed, followed by some poorly spelled descriptions. Just below that, there's an entry for Baraquiel. We now have pictures of the book text. It says, Baraquiel, Dominion, Angel of the Sky. Appearance, hair and eye-burning ginger. Eyebrows with the appearance of a grizzly slug. Often draped in red, occasionally damp, most likely singed. The name Crowley is circled just above Baraquiel. Angel of the Sky and the ginger hair do fit Crowley. Often draped in red might sort of fit. He wears almost exclusively black, but his costume contrasts are almost always red. The big issue with Baraquiel is, if this guide is for demons, it must have been written after the Great War and the Fall. There wouldn't be a reason to include fallen angels who are now demons in the guide. I like this one because it's an Easter egg that's right there in the show, but if this was Crowley, there's a continuity issue but it's not completely ruled out. Raphael is probably one of the most popular theories. Raphael was an angel of healing in Hebrew and Christian lore, and snakes are often used to represent healing. Raphael is not a fallen angel. I think the main reason this theory has gained popularity was that prior to season two, we didn't have much information to go on at all, and Raphael is one of the most well-known archangels in Western culture. It's natural to wonder if we have Gabriel, Michael, and Uriel, where the heck is Raphael? More recently, since Aziraphale's promotion to Supreme Archangel at the end of Season 2, the idea that Aziraphale will become Raphael has really taken off, but I think that deserves its own video, so let's put a pin in Raphael. Azazel is a fallen angel in the Hebrew tradition. Azazel was associated with the scapegoat rite where a goat was symbolically used to bear the sins of the Jewish people, then sent out into the wilderness. In Christian and Hebrew tradition, Azazel is also associated with the introduction of forbidden knowledge to humans. He is also responsible for introducing both weapons and cosmetics to humanity. We know Crowley was the snake in the Garden of Eden, so that fits. Now, Aziraphale introduced the weapon in Eden, but Crowley does wear a lot of female garb and some cosmetics throughout the show. In addition, tying this to Aziraphale as Raphael in Christian lore, Raphael is known to have fought Azazel and thrown him and his armies into a valley of fire. That could be something that happened during the Great War. 
So with Azazel, there's this possible tie between both Crowley and Aziraphale. Cocabiol is the most obscure option that I'm going to discuss, but it has become very popular. Part of the Hebrew tradition, Cocabiol was an angel of the stars and is also a fallen angel in some apocryphal texts. He commanded armies and taught about the constellations to other angels. There isn't a lot of information here, but what we do have is admittedly a very good fit for Crowley. I really only want to present this information and let you, the fans, draw your own conclusions. Which of these angels do you think fits Crowley best before his fall? Or do you think it was none of these and some other named angel, perhaps? What rank do you think he was? Maybe he was just a random mid-level dominion or throne. Or maybe you think it really doesn't matter and we may never even get to find out. That's an interesting idea. Let's explore it a little. Does Crowley's previous name and rank even matter to the story? Are we overthinking all of this? We can't say definitively, of course, but there are a few hints that it might come into play in season three. I want to show you the clue. The biggest clues that it might matter are the fact that Crowley can access Gabriel's files and the repeated display of his missing memories. These are such intentional things to show the audience, but what does it mean? Why do these details about Crowley exist? What purpose do the details serve narratively? It could mean that he was high enough up that he just didn't pay attention to others, as is shown with Gabriel when he can't remember Sirachwil's name, despite her being one of only a handful of angels that he works with. Maybe Crowley was- Didn't see <laughs> In all seriousness, although I have my own personal favorite here, I really want to know what you think. I hope you found this video interesting. If you have any thoughts about this discussion and would like to share them, please do so in the comment section down below. I'm very active and will answer any questions you have there. If you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe. I have fun making the occasional fan cut and crack video, but at heart, I'm a researcher. And since the release of season two, I have gone, uh, let me check, mm, exactly zero minutes and zero seconds without thinking about good omens. I like compiling all of the information floating around and turning it into what I hope is an entertaining way for other fans to digest it. I have a lot of ideas for future videos in the works, and it's going to be sometime between now and season three, and this seems like a great way to spend it. So thanks for watching. Sindaria out.